Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now today we're jumping back into Sea of Thieves and we're checking out its latest expansion, Cursed Sails. For anyone who's played Sea of Thieves, you kind of already know the issues it had when it came out back in March. People's complaints, criticisms, kind of what it had and then what people thought it may need in the future. So I'm not going to go over that all again. If you are interested in hearing kind of about that perspective, you can go back and watch my video on The Hungering Deep, which I did back when that came out in June and that goes into all that so i'll link that at the top right and chuck it in the description but in this video we're just going to get straight into it and talk about the new expansion so like i said curse sales is the next expansion for sea of thieves it's the second we've got so far and it's just been released in the past few days it includes a new ship a new enemy type a new alliances feature obviously new cosmetics so hair dyes uh, new things to wear that kind of stuff and also a time limited campaign for the next three weeks so after playing it for a wee while, getting into it, trying out all its features, I'm really happy with it, and here's why I think it's exactly what the game needs. So since this is the second expansion, uh, we've kind of already had a taste of what Rare is hoping to put into the game in terms of new content and new features. So The Hungering Deep came out back in June, and while I was pretty positive on it, after a wee while it did kind of just kind of fall to the wayside, it didn't impact the whole game in a massive amount the shark was really cool and the campaign was really cool as well but it doesn't affect the gameplay too much the game's basically the same just with a couple of new things in there with the new drums and the horn and that kind of stuff so the shark is really fun i think having it in game just swimming around is really cool i prefer it to the kraken just because instead of the kraken just instantly attacking you the shark will sometimes just swim around close to your boat if you don't provoke it and i think that's a really cool way just to have it there and not necessarily have to fight it every time but overall it didn't change the game too much, so I was hoping for a bit of a game changer when we got Cursed Sails. So looking into the new content, we'll start with the new ship. So the new ship is the Brigantine, so it's a three-man ship placed right in between the sloop and the galleon. Basically right in between it with everything, so size-wise it's about right in the middle. It has four cannons, whereas the sloop has two and the galleon has six. It has two masts, where the sloop has one and the galleon has three. So it's right in the middle in terms of all its features. I really like it, I think it's really cool, the curved deck is quite a cool design even though it kind of makes it a bit difficult to see in front of you when you've got the sails fully extended, but it's perfect for three people, even two people I think, if you're used to going in a sloop and you want to kind of bulk up your ship then I think this will work really well even for two people, and even one person I think if they're quite good at the game could manage it well enough. So I think that's a really great addition, just kind of means that if you're a crew of three, which I'm sure a lot of people are, you don't always have to roll with a galleon, which can be sometimes a bit difficult to manage when you've just got three of you. So really happy with that and I think they did a great job in bringing in a new ship. And it's just going to change the game up with not always just having to see, oh, is it a sloop or a galleon? It could be something in the middle. And I think it is a really good design and it works really well. I'm still hoping that they're going to add interior and amenity customization in ships. So I did see a leaked image that I initially thought was going to be for uh, this expansion, but Rhea later said that it was, they said put out by accident, but I don't know, I think they might have done it intentionally, where it showed um, some different cannons on board a brigantine. So they said they would be coming in the next expansion, so I'm assuming the next one uh, Forsaken Shores in September. So I am looking forward to that and hoping we get some more customization in the ships instead of just sails and hulls, maybe uh, inside placement or like your yeah, different looking cannons or just something that kind of changes it up a bit. And I know they can't do too much with having, you know, the Kraken and things that attack your ship. They have to model and map each one. I'm expecting just cosmetic changes, but the more the merrier so i'm hoping to see more of that in the future and that takes us on to the next feature which is the alliances so i think this is really good it's a great addition i kind of wish it was in the game to begin with i'm sure they thought about it and maybe they just didn't have time or, or i don't know i think it's really well done it's super easy to do it would pretty much you just go up to the top of your mast choose a wee button that says you're looking for an alliance or you want to join and then you get close to someone else you can just join them and it's super easy. The first time we went out, we ended up with an armada of four brigantines in a galleon. So cool, just having us all kind of team up to fight these skeleton ships. Really cool sight, and it's really cool just talking over voice and not just having the normal CFDs encounter of just trying to blow each other to smithereens. And it gives kind of legitimate reasons for people to team up, but there's just enough incentive to consider kind of betraying them. Because, um, you know, you're in, we're pirates, we're on the Sea of Thieves, so... There is a bit of an incentive to betray them as, you know, if anyone in the Alliance turns in loot, the one who turns it in gets 
whereas everyone else only gets 50. So you do still get something, but you know, maybe in the last second you might want to turn the alliance off, kill them, sink their ship, take their stuff and turn in all the loot for yourself. So there's enough there to kind of give that sense of like, I wonder if they're going to betray me kind of thing. So yeah, really happy with how they implemented it and yeah, just really glad it's, it's in the game. Just kind of adds a whole new avenue to go about, you know, seeing other ships. It's not just going to be shoot on sight anymore. Next big headlining feature we've got is these skeleton ships. So they're basically galleon class vessels that are now run by skeletons. So in the time limited campaign, they're based around different portions of the map and you can go to outposts and basically the skeletons have set up these shrines i guess you could call them an outpost that has a skeleton on it that moves around and looks pretty cool um, and it tells you where roughly the skeleton ships are going to be and at what time so you can go there you can face them uh, it kind of comes up like you're in a new island it comes up with a banner saying you're in a battle with you know whoever the crew is that you're fighting and they either sometimes they're kind of based there already you can see them in the distance or they launch out of the water uh, really close to a ship which looks so cool I'm so glad they did that it looks awesome it's kind of like that scene from Pirates of the Caribbean when Davy Jones launches out of the water it looks really cool and the ships themselves look awesome too really cool design they look like ships run by skeletons they're all in disarray and things are broken and you know snapped and the woods worn it just looks really cool it looks how you'd expect a ship run by skeletons to look the encounters themselves are really fun they're not easy they're almost like a skeleton fort that is on the water and moves around. Not quite as big, but the skeletons do respawn. You have to go on there and you, know, you can kill the captain or just keep fighting the skeletons off until they can stop repairing their ship to sink them. So you can solo them and I've seen people do it. I've tried in a brigantine for our first try and it was we didn't end up doing it. It just ended up taking too long and some other people came to help. So easier if you do it with some others. But yeah, if you want to take on the challenge, then you can do one other cool thing is that they do have loot in their ships, so it's not just like, you know, normal skeletons where you just fight them and they die and that's it. Um, there is goodies on their ship and throughout each wave of the battle against those crews, uh, you get better and better loot, which is really cool and it's a great incentive to keep fighting them. I'm not sure how they're going to implement it once the campaign is done, so whether they um, just have them randomly appear or whether they will just be in certain areas or certain times, I'm not sure. I'm kind of interested to see because I would rather them not just have them appear randomly, kind of like the Kraken. It just means that if you do want to fight them, you can't really go anywhere just to do it. And if you don't want to fight them, it just gets annoying when they appear like the Kraken. So a couple of ideas I had was maybe you kind of know roughly where they are and if they you know, do a try, try and attack you, they'll just kind of patrol their turf and if you want to leave, you can just kind of get on out of there and they won't follow. Or maybe they're kind of based around certain islands at different times and there's some kind of visual cue on that they're going to be there. Maybe the, the water's rougher or there's like a bit of a storm above the island or something. I don't know, just something to tell where you, there's a bit of player choice and they can choose if they want to fight them or not. So we'll see what they do with that when that campaign is done in a few weeks. The campaign is fine, it's nothing amazing, um, but it does give you a bit of lore and, you know, it's nothing special, but it's kind of how the Hungry Deep campaign was, kind of sending you all across the map to do certain tasks. The time limited cosmetics are probably one of the biggest reasons to do it, aside from getting the lore, and you can get some cool stuff that you can only get in these three weeks. The new cosmetics we got are great as well, so we've got new hair dyes, just another way to change up your character and make them look less like just Captain Barbosa, which is kind of what everyone looks like at some stage, so you can kind of change your way up a wee bit. Uh, there's new outfits, new ship hulls, new flags, I really like the new hunter set, I think that's really cool. And the new bone crusher set is pretty sweet as well. And with all that added, there's just a lot more customization now, so from launch, ships kind of looked very similar. Um, same with players as well, but now especially ships can look really unique with all the hulls and the figureheads which are so cool I love the figureheads and sails and then you always sail at the top and you know that looks really good And I'm really hoping that when we hopefully do get some more interior customization We can have them look um, even more different than they are now So after listening through all that you can probably tell why I think Kersalis has been exactly what Sea of Thieves needed in terms of a free expansion the new features are great and they give a ton of options for the new gameplay and tons of excitement as well. It's so much more than what we got in Hungry Deep, um, just because it changes up the actual gameplay, not just having 
a couple of extra things or enemies that does actually change how you play it which is really cool gives you another way to do it so all the things apart from the campaign are staying around after the three weeks like i said i'm not sure how they're going to implement the skeleton ships after that uh, but we'll just have to see so the campaign's going away the rest of it's staying in which is really good it's just going to make the world feel more alive uh, which is always a good thing so if you kind of wanted something else from Sea of Thieves, maybe you played it back in the day, or you're just kind of holding off to see um, what they add, then I think this is it. I'd recommend it for people who just want to try it out now to give it a go. Game Pass is cheap, so you can just buy a month basically for $10, $15, wherever you're at, and just try it out. If you don't like it, you just don't have to continue the Game Pass, which is really cool. I think it's a great idea. Um, tons of other games you can play with it too, especially if you're on Xbox, so that's pretty sweet. And if you have the game already, then you'll love it. Just get in there, get some friends, and you should have a blast. I'm looking forward to the next DLC. So we've got Forsaken Shores coming up in September, which we know is coming at least with a new map or a new portion of the map. We don't really know what else, but they said there's going to be more things for each new expansion because they've had more time to develop them. So I'm excited to see what they give us. And that one's going to be free too. So fingers crossed for something great i'm sure they will deliver they haven't failed us so far so looking forward to that and yeah that about covers it so i'd recommend you give it a try if you haven't got it consider maybe picking up the game pass if you've got a couple of friends then just you know you can grab it it's still a great co-op game if people are asking for really good co-op games especially on xbox or if you're on pc there's crossplay so it'd still be one of my favorite co-op games it's still quite a unique experience that you can't really get anywhere else so really excited to see what comes out and hopefully you want to give it a try and jump in there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the seas.